Hi again, right, Bangkok Chronicles, maybe number 12. So we just got into the area where I was talking about adult DVDs, music MP3s. Back 14 years ago, it was all CDs uh, and DVDs. The Blu-ray wasn't out then, but that's where. They're all over Bangkok, these. I never touched them. The wife bought uh, quite a few Thai movies and Thai music MP3s. So cheap, you know, 20, 50 albums on one CD, DVD. It was great. Naughty, but there you go, not for resale. Still to this day, and on a map you'll see auto parts. Now this is a, a covered over, a car park at the back, lots of little alleyways, one main alleyway, and I think there's a KFC at the front, um, section. On the main thoroughfare by the KFC was cheap plastic Chinese products, cheap torches, uh, cutlery, it was just a right mi a mix of everything on the one side. On the other side, it was all DVD players for the house, um, car stereos, and back then it was the big thing was flip up screens with a DVD screen and TVs. So this was all electrical, Chinese imported um, household DVDs and car DVD players. Big money. I did look at it to go on eBay. I checked a lot of prices out. There was money to be made, but the problem with selling electrical goods, in my eyes, is they can go wrong. They can break and it can cause you hassle. Plus they're quite large to post. So I never bothered. Behind, a bit before the car park, loads of little alleyways. And this was auto parts for cars. Thailand are famous for the young lads to customize their cars new bits of plastic all over them, wheel arches, mag wheels, um, tinted windows, extra gauges on the dashboard, everything was in this section. Anything to customise a car was here. But one product that I caught my eye after investigation was headlight bulbs. Now back then they were expensive. And the halogen had just come out and they were really expensive in America and the UK but here just fresh in from China there was only about six different variations back then and they were about 50 baht 80 baht a dollar two dollar three dollars I grabbed a load of those on eBay to America to UK to Europe and they were about eight pound each I was selling them for. So small, shipping cost next to nothing, it was making clear five pound a unit, and I sold hundreds of them. Absolutely, and a lot of trade inquiries started coming in then. Would I send a box to them? And I did. Um, a company, it was in Belgium, was buying a box of a hundred bulbs off me. I reduced the price to trade, but I was still making two pound a bulb every box i was making 200 pounds back then that was fifteen thousand baht every box and this company and others started and that's the first time i got into trade sales um, and if i'd have stayed in bangkok or if i was there now that it's what that's the way to make the money the trade sales or even you plain boxing, you put it to Amazon, you sell on Amazon, and they fulfill the orders for you. That's the way to go. If you're in anywhere in Asia, you can do it from India, uh, everywhere in Asia, you can do it. If you find the right item, off to Amazon, they fulfill the order, they ship it, everything. Money just comes in. Auto parts, there's always a market for bits and pieces on cars. I found alternate car bits for the engines, alternators and water pumps. All this was cheaper, but it was too heavy. I didn't bother. A lot of people asked me to get 
into car parts there is a market there but you really need to start shipping huge quantity in containers to be able to make the markup but that section and behind it in these little alleyways was motorcycle parts again most of Asia uh, all around India all around Thailand Cambodia Vietnam Laos Miramar motorcycles there are the most popular motorcycle is something like or it was a Honda 125cc had a three-speed semi-automatic gearbox no clutch used to be what, what we called Honda C90 these Honda waves were the the main bike all around Asia nowadays they've moved forward a bit and it'll be like the Honda click which is a squirt and go it's just turn the throttle front and back brake no gears or Yamaha or Suzuki they're all the Kawasaki all the companies make them now these are huge in Asia and this section in Bangkok sold all the spare parts customizing parts for the young lads but plain normal parts so that it was all the consumables the oil the filters the spark plugs headlight bulbs that this there's money to be made there and still to this day but not shipping so much abroad but buying in bulk and selling in around thailand in the bike shops and things because these little bike shops in every village need parts but you've got to get them they can't keep going up down to bangkok for a couple of parts so there's that was in my mind i dabbled with a few parts on the on ebay um and they ticked over but nothing took off also in bangkok there's a lot of old vespers anybody who's into scooters and old vespers and lambrettas thailand have got them but when you buy one uh, maybe 500 pounds 600 dollars shipping it out costs a bit import duty into your own country registering it it adds up but there's lots of them there and you often see around bangkok it's an amazing sight I'll try and dig out a photo. You see the Vespers. All these little engineering shops use the Vespers to deliver their goods. And you'll see a guy sat right up the front of the Vespa. And he'll have 10 boxes piled up behind him on the seat. It's an amazing sight. Um, but they just, people love them. They just keep going forever, the Vespers. You can change every part on them. Great delivery bike. So in this area, again, there's Vespa bits and pieces and Vespa sales also all around Sampeng, Kom Tom um, and the back of Chinatown is where you'll find the main Vespa if you're looking for a Vespa that's where you need to start taxi drivers is the other source if you want a Vespa ask the taxi drivers Vespa Mersong second hand Vespa they'll probably know someone selling some and they'll take you to the shop so that section auto parts motorcycle parts brilliant but my best seller was the car headlight bulbs all the way through my second year in bangkok i was constantly selling those making great money the the problem with i was getting so many products and it every day it was over getting them back to the condo boxing them up it, it's a lot of work traveling from four or five kilometers across Bangkok all the time with all these products if I'd have stayed in Bangkok longer than the two years I would have taken a unit a small unit somewhere in Chinatown and just worked out of there it would have been much better but with the uncertainty of life ahead and being homesick I never bothered but there would be a very interesting living living in uh, Bangkok with a little office unit in the center of Chinatown it would be fantastic that would be a choice of mine definitely as we come out men was learning more and more on eBay I had extra tools on eBay back in those days where you could do mass listings just a click of a few adverts you'd already made and it would just put them in 
she got really good with eBay, helping me. Everywhere she, we went, she'd be talking to people and she'd be drilling down on where the products come from. Um, a lot of people are asking me about cosmetics, white whitener creams, um, with the type of put this cream on to try and get a paler complexion. This is all there, but you've just got to drill down. And none of that took my fancy. Uh, Mem started spotting some other products, the more fancy little products, but we dabbled with many, many products that I'm not even going to cover on these chronicles. And I lost money on loads of buying loads of silly items and trying them. A stock was building up in the condo um, of just junk and stuff that didn't sell. No way of getting rid of it. So at one point, maybe a month in on the second year, um, we'd got Mem's sister from down in the village to come up with her husband. That's uh, when I met them the first time, I believe, with a pickup truck and we threw so much stuff in the back of the pickup truck they took it back to the village and just stored it for the future <laughs> and I think it's now stored in with my snooker table in the village still there <laughs> it's still boxes of stuff but yeah you even though I'm constantly saying how he's doing so well and making money we ended up wasting a lot of money buying products that just didn't work um, so yeah, it's trial and error, a huge trial and error. So as we came out of the order parts section, so we're now on the one road over from, from Yawa Rat Road, we hit the mobile phone section. Now this section was to be um, a changing point in our relationship, our lives in Bangkok, and it was what we brought back to the UK and spent a couple of years doing we got into the phone market and I'll do a complete video on the phone market but initially when you come round the corner you have a, a shopping mall with about four floors and at that time all they were selling was the phone covers back then the popular phone was the Nokia 3310, the 3410 and the smaller Nokia's 8310. The smart Nokia's, the smartphone ones had just started coming out but they were a lot of money. But it was a huge business, phone covers uh, and many other bits. But what we spotted, what Mem spotted was like a little leather pouch that you'd put on your belt and you could put your phone into it and it would clip over. Now I didn't think much to these little leather. They were leather. There were some plastic ones but the leather ones and they were about 25 baht each. So it was about 30, 40 pence. Clip on leather covers, all different sizes and shapes but they're mainly, it was for guys that would clip on the belt or for ladies to clip on the back of the handbag. Now I thought, very skeptical, I thought it's very plain, it's nothing exciting, 30, 40 pence, would it sell? And this was Mem's first idea. Um, and she pushed me and said, this will sell. I think this, you know, everyone in Thailand loves these. So we bought about 20 of them um, and put them on eBay. They sold, within hours, they'd all gone. Um, and I was totally shocked. It's just a product I didn't think would sell. So yeah, we got about another hundred. Again, they all sold. It was ridiculous, they were going quicker than even the handbags. But we were only selling them for about three, four pound. We made, I think we were making two pound, which was huge on these little things. Men persuaded me, let's get more. So we did all the different shapes and colors and sizes. There was loads of them. And we bought hundreds and hundreds and they sold and sold. But then again, another trade inquiry from Manchester 
and one trade inquiry from um, it was near Washington in the USA for them. After investigation, again, I could get boxes of hundreds and there was just thousands available to me. And yep, again, we, sh we found a shipping agent now. At this point, Mem had twigged about the carrying the boxes and shipping. There was a shipping shop in Chinatown. It was about three streets over, but we could take boxes there they organize everything, shipping, paperwork, and they just ship, which was perfect. So we bought and trade sale to the Manchester and this place near Washington. We were making a pound an item. It was about a hundred pound a box, which was great. And they wanted loads of boxes. So I remember we bought 10 boxes for this Manchester company. So there was a thousand items and it had been a few quid to buy them all obviously. I was paying, as I say, well, I got the price down. I think I was paying about 25 pence a unit, but it was about 25 um, pound a box. I invested about 250 pound, plus the shipping was about another 100 pound. We got this one lot, we took it to the, all shipped off fine. Um, customs at the UK grabbed them. The Manchester uh, shop were presented with a import duty because it was well, it was business. You know, they're importing goods, and I stated that they'd have to pay all that. But customs put a silly price on it, and the Manchester shop, I remember this very well, turned around and said, "Not accepting it. Not interested. Send it back." And it sat in the customs and they wouldn't pay me. I'd spent out all this money. The goods were in the UK. Couldn't do anything with them. I ended up paying, it was a hundred, another hundred and twenty pound, I think. And somebody to go and get them out of customs and shipped. But I retrieved them all and sent to the UK address. And later on, a year or so later, I got my money back and made about 20, 30 pence an item. But it stopped me with the trade sales. Because of import duties to the different countries, it was just too risky. I didn't have, well, okay, we were making good money, but when that company said no, I thought, right. The car bulbs we kept doing, but we stopped on the phone stuff. We thought, no, it's just, it was too high risk. And that was my first time I got sort of stung. And it makes you realize, you know, don't go too crazy. Anyway, we're flying on on the time. I hope you're enjoying these. I hope this gives you some information and maybe helps you make a pound or save a pound. And um, drop in below the comments any questions or any information you want. Let's see if I can pull it back from the memory or investigate online for you. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.